Hi everyone! Today we're going to be learning about Sanguinaria canadensis L, otherwise known as Red Bacoon, Indian Paint, Bloodwort, and Bloodroot. Bloodroot is a herbaceous perennial springtime ephemeral plant that can grow to be about 25 centimeters tall. This species is the only member of its genus. Also, Native Americans would use this species medicinally to treat things like beavers and ringworm. Currently, bloodroot is being studied as a treatment for skin cancer using its dominant chemical compound sanguaranine. Also, this species is used to produce red, orange, and pink dyes. Now, if we take a look at a distribution map of bloodroot in North America, we can see that it is native to Eastern and Central North America. This species is decently popular in cultivation and is perfect to plant if you're wanting to restore some old woodlands. If you're looking to add bloodroot to your landscape, it grows best in hardiness zones 3 through 8. Now, when it comes to bloodroot's natural environment, it prefers areas that are rich, moist, and not so densely wooded. So some habitats that it can be found in would be forests, on the bank of a stream, and on the edge of a bluff. But remember, it prefers rich areas overall. All right, if we turn our attention to the leaves of bloodroot, we'll see that bloodroot only has one basal leaf. The leaf is green, simple, kidney-shaped, has five to nine lobes, and has a paler underside. Also, once the flowers of bloodroot die, the leaves will persist until about August, and they'll grow much larger in size during that period. Additionally, bloodroot has a thick underground stem called a rhizome, and if you break any part of a bloodroot plant, it'll start to leak a bright reddish-orange sap. The rhizome leaks a bit more though, which is where it gets its name, bloodroot. You don't really want to get the sap on your skin or ingest it though. Bloodroot blooms March to May, being one of the first wildflowers to bloom. And when it does, it produces a singular white flower. Each flower has eight to 16 white petals, many yellow stamen, and a single green pistil. These flowers also have two sepals that fall right off as the flower is blooming. So you'll typically see them without their sepals. I mentioned earlier that bloodroot is a spring ephemeral, and that's because it produces a flower early but doesn't stick around for long. The petals fall off a day or two after pollination or if the wind blows too hard because the flowers are very delicate. The flowers don't stick around for very long because the bloodroot plant is trying to quickly produce seeds, photosynthesize, and store sugars in its rhizome before the trees above block out its sunlight. Now speaking of pollination, Bloodroot doesn't have nectar to reward its pollinators with. All they get when they visit is pollen and empty promises of nectar. But some of the fools that pollinate bloodroot are bees, flies, and beetles. After pollination has occurred, the petals will fall off a flower and the ovary will swell to produce a thin green capsule. This capsule will contain 10 to 15 brown to black bloodroot seeds. The seeds shown are a bit premature. Now, these seeds have a fatty structure on them that is attractive to ants. So ants will feed their larvae with a fatty structure, then get rid of the seed, which effectively disperses it. Lastly, bloodroot can do pretty well by reproducing asexually and forming colonies. Alrighty, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning about bloodroot, also known as Sanguinaria canadensis with me. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in my next video.